Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Access. In this module, I want to talk to you about using the totals feature. So I've got a database open at the moment with one table. If I just double click on that, you can see the data in there. So I have some number fields or currency fields you can see there. And then I have the total feature activated at table level. This isn't what I want to focus on, but just to show you that if I click off totals, totals is just sit, simply sitting there. And then you've got the option of selecting what you want it to do, whether you want it to sum, which is what it's doing in this case, sum in the salary, or you could do average, count, max, min, and whatever else is listed there. So that's available at the table level just by clicking this little button there. But what I want to focus on in this little video is how you can use that totals feature in a query. So first of all, I'm going to create a query, create query in design view and add this table. So I'm adding that table. I'll just expand that table a little bit so you can see all the fields. Now, what I'm going to do is by department, I want to use the totals feature to give me a, a total salary per department, an average and the maximum and also a count of the personnel that is in that department. So if I just double click on department, that will drop it down there. Then I want the salary field double clicked three times. So it comes down three times and then the name field, the surname field. So that comes down like so. Now at the moment, if I run that query, it's just going to be like a duplication it's expression because you can't have three copies of the same field with the same name. So it won't have that, but it gives you this information there. And then you can see that information as well. So if I go back into design, the totals feature at query design level is here. If I click this on, what I get is a row called total, believe it or not, where you've got group by group by all the way across. So I do want to group by department, but this is what's going to happen now. I want to select sum for salary, the first one. Then I want the average salary. And then I want the maximum salary per department, max. And then last one, I want a count of how many people are in that department. So if I click on count, that should give me the information I want. If I now run that, you now see that we've got different figures here. So there's only one person in the finance department, so that's why they're all the same. But you can see the retail sales and training of multiple people. The county is giving me that information. So the figures are reflecting whatever you've asked it to do. So some of it, average of it, the maximum salary of it. Now, the labels themselves can be changed. You can change those in design. So it just says whatever you want, total, average, max, and then uh, personnel. If I just do that, if we go back into design, what you have to do there is you have to get in front of the actual field name. And I'm just going to call the first one total with a colon. That will rename it total. If I then do the same for average, just type the word average. Colon is the critical um, symbol that you need between the two things. And this one's going to be max colon. And then I'll just do personnel colon. And then if you run that, those names should replace the names that were there before. And then you've got that information. Now, if I save this query, just click on that and just call it QRY totals. So we know what it's called. Press enter. I've got that saved now. I can run a report on that. You've got that same sort of feature in report level. But if I just go create report and use the wizard, I'll bring them all across. Let's go next. So I can still group by department. So that's my department. And then you've got these summary options. So if you want, you've got the total, the average, the max uh, of all of these. Plus you can do a percentage of the overall total. So I'll just don't want to sum those really. I'll just leave it like that. The average, I'll just leave the sum on there. Click OK. And then you've got ascending, descending. I'll leave it as that. Set it to landscape. Always a good idea when you're going through the wizard. And then you just put RPT in front of that. RPT. Because it's a report looking at the query called total. And then finish. And then you should get your end product. As always with the wizard. Or nearly always. It truncates some of the fields. 
but you've got the finance department and then you've got the re review of that and then you've got um, retail and sales and so on and so on Your numbers of people are there and the figures are there that these need to be fixed so if I just go close this down it's this stuff here look if I just um, it's probably that as well actually if I just pull that across a little bit and then just move that one across and just make it a little bit smaller this is why I tend to do all these things myself manually so I don't have to worry about doing what I'm doing now which is a bit of a pain just to fix this I don't want that label there because it's just cluttering up the whole report so if I have a look at that now if I go back to report design and view now that looks a little bit better but you can see there it hasn't formatted which is quite strange to be honest that it hasn't formatted the currency for the actual sum so I'll go back into design to do that so that one if I go into properties and then you've got text format don't want that one currency is what I want that's it let's have a look there we go that's better so we've got it in pounds so now it's no longer truncated um, the grand total is not truncated but it's also not set to pounds so again that's at the bottom in design this one same place currency oops currency not the euro currency have a look there we go happy teddy bears so I'll just close that and yes I will save that and then you've got your report there so based on the table of information you've got your table there you've created a query that's summarized it as you want it with totals average and max and then you've generated a report but like I've already said you can actually generate this report without that step because the wizard would do that if you wanted it to do that but you do get a lot of extra gubbins on the report when you use the wizard but hopefully this little video has been of use thank you for your time and I'll catch you on the next one